I'm gonna take a moment, give you all fair warning to just step back, cause I'm about to flex my horror nerd muscle and talk about the 1977 Japanese horror movie, House. In all seriousness, House is one of the most well-known of the niche horror genre. It's a movie that occasionally spawns a few memes in the greater internet community, but is most commonly referenced by film enthusiasts for its unique visuals and pretty harsh tonal whiplash. The second part is the real reason I want to talk about this movie today. I want to make a new statement for House. House is not a horror movie. Not really. Not anymore. Now, you might be sitting there saying, I don't understand, Caleb. What's the difference? Simultaneously proving you don't know how the internet works and didn't get my paranormal activity joke. It's fine, though. Let's go over the movie and I'll explain. We start with a weird private photo shoot between two friends that the movie will only refer to as Gorgeous and Fantasy. Fantasy makes a comment about how Gorgeous looks like a ghost, but then they're discovered by a teacher who we are told is getting married soon. And that's literally all we'll ever know about her, because she'll never show up in this movie again. We then meet Gorgeous's father, who we have to assume is wealthy because he's returning from a business trip in Italy and has brought his daughter the sickest souvenir he could find. A new mom. There's three things we're supposed to immediately take away from the introduction. One is that she's hot as hell. Two is that she wants to be a great mom. And three is that there is a personal wind generator that is aimed exclusively at her scarf at all times, whether she's moving or not. Gorgeous is as upset about her dad's new squeeze as I am about the fact that the camera is determined to put as much of this fucking lattice between it and the characters as humanly possible. After throwing a fit that would make Edgar Allan Poe proud, she decides to ditch her dad and instead join Fantasy on her trip. Here we meet the rest of our lovable gang, all with amazing names that immediately tell you everything that you need to know. There's Mac, who enjoys food, her nickname is short for stomach for some reason, Professor, who likes to read, Kung Fu, who's good at fighting, Melody, who plays music, and Sweet, who is nice, I guess? I don't know. It turns out that their teacher was taking them to his sister's house for some kind of vacation, but she's indisposed. So instead, Gorgeous offers to take them to visit her strange aunt's house. She writes to inform her aunt that they're coming and finds a cat named Blanche. They all gather together to make their way, but their teacher gets caught up in a bucket and needs to visit a hospital to get it removed. And here's where you get a small taste as to what kind of visual tomfoolery that you're going to grow to love as the movie goes on. As you watch his almost stop motion adventure with this bucket. The girls get on the train to the country and actively cockblock this random dude just trying to get a good guy kiss from his lady. We then receive the backstory on the ant by way of a riff tracks type commentary by the girls as they watch a silent movie of a doomed love and a promise unfulfilled. And here, friends, 20 minutes into the movie, do we have our introduction scene. The band Go Die Go, and I don't know if it's pronounced that way, or Go Diego, sings a happy song about life and adventure as the girls make their way to the house, but not before meeting a happy rotund man who tells them how to get there, and then laughs with this weird melon head thing that's hanging on his shop. The girls then meet the aunt in person who greets them in a wheelchair and it turns out that everyone's moved away from the town except her and the melon man. Small pieces then fall off the chandelier, one piercing a lizard, and Kung Fu leaps into the air to punch another one into the phone on the wall. And Sweet has a unique reaction to this. After that, they all work together to clean the house as thanks for taking them in. They have a nice dinner and Matt goes to get the melon that she bought from the melon man. When she doesn't come back, Fantasy eventually goes to get the melon herself and pulls it up out of the well. Except instead of pulling up a melon, she pulls up Mac's severed head. It laughs and floats around and then bites her butt for some reason. But when she goes to get the other girls, they pull up the chilled melon, which they then serve for dessert. Gorgeous decides to take a bath while Kung Fu starts to cut firewood, which proceeds to come to life and attack her. She fights it off relatively easily, but then declares it was probably an illusion. Speaking of illusions, the ant decides that she's going to pull a Chris Angel in Mind Freak Fantasy by teleporting to the rafters through the fridge. We then get to see how she spends her evening. After a light bit of jazz aerobics and a healthy dinner, she and Blanche have a nice time setting up the piano in the music room. 
Melody immediately takes advantage of their kindness to drop just a true banger that even the skeleton in the background can't help but jam out to. As Melody continues to drop bars, Gorgeous is reapplying her makeup in the mirror upstairs, when she notices something weird happening in the mirror. First she becomes a vampire, then her aunt for a little bit, then decides that she would rather try out for the new Fantastic Four movie, which I think is a bad move career-wise. Melody starts screaming, and as the girls go to investigate, Sweet is attacked by a bunch of pillows and bedsheets in probably one of the softest, least violent killings I will ever see on this channel. Unable to find Sweet, they instead decide to go find Gorgeous, who's now acting a little strange. The whole movie starts acting a little strange, because it starts running for about 10 frames per second for the next few minutes. Gorgeous tries to make a phone call, but surprise surprise, there's someone already on the line. So instead she heads out to have a small musical number in the garden, while the other girls are locked into the house. Oh shit, you remember the teacher? The one who got stuck in the bucket way back at the beginning? He's finally on his way to the house to be the hero in the final act. Until then, the girls decide that the lockdown must be some kind of advanced security system and go to find the ant to release them, only to find a severed hand which they believe belongs to Mac, but decide that that's too insane for this movie and have Melody play another banger to cheer them up until Gorgeous returns. This proves to be a mistake as when the girls go to check because they believe Gorgeous has returned, the piano turns on Melody and instead decides it's going to play itself, which means it needs to get rid of Melody. This leads to probably the most famous scene where gifts and clips and everything comes from in this movie as a skeleton straight loses his shit as melody is eaten by the piano and melody is 100 percent completely nonplussed about it her severed head even makes a joke about the positioning of her body while this is happening, the professor finds the ant's diary, while Kung Fu finds sweets in a clock. I don't know how that happened, considering she was smothered by pillows and blankets, but here we are, what can you do, right? They go to find Fantasy and Melody, but find that even the skeleton can no longer jam out to the final notes that Melody is playing. Meanwhile, that fucking teacher is at a ramen shop having a nice calming meal with people that he met. But it is all to build up the tension for when he arrives to play the hero. Gorgeous, now possessed by the spirit of her aunt, has decided that playtime is over and begins a non-stop assault against the girls, which Kung Fu actually fights off pretty much single-handedly, which really makes me wish that she was the hero of this story instead of the teacher who we see has finally arrived in town. Gorgeous and Kung Fu have a showdown in the garden that rivals some of the best fights from the Matrix movies. Gorgeous overpowers her, but the professor informs them that if they can destroy the cat painting, then they'll all be freed. Kung Fu tries, but is captured by a haunted light fixture that sends her on a weird, psychedelic trip. On this trip, though, she remembers her friends who have died, and in her last moment of life sends her severed legs across the room to destroy the painting, which surprisingly works. The cat is killed and Gorgeous erupts in blood, showing that the curse will finally be broken. But then Kung Fu's legs land in a dresser and are destroyed, and it's revealed that attacking the painting has only made things worse. The teacher arrives at the Melon Man stand in order to get directions to the house, but gets into an argument over the best kind of food. When the teacher proclaims that he doesn't like melons, the shock of it kills the Melon Man, and the shock of killing that man sends the teacher into a panic. Back at the house, Professor loses her glasses and tries to find them in the blood scene, but is eventually consumed by the monsters hidden inside. Fantasy floats through the house, eventually coming to find Gorgeous, who she believes is still her best friend deep inside. 
it fades to black and we fade in on the next morning where the stepmom arrives at the melon man stand to find nothing but an abandoned car overflowing with bananas. Go Die Go begins playing again, a beautiful song about returning home and getting married, living a happy life with people who love you as she slowly approaches the house. She meets Gorgeous, who informs her that her friends are sleeping, but they'll be up soon. They always get up when they're hungry. And that's the end. So why do I say that House is not a horror movie when it clearly ends the way that it does? It's because I think that there's something far more interesting in this movie. A slice of life story with a horror twist. It is, for almost 60% of the runtime, a sweet happy story about girls on a trip who end up in a bad situation. Which isn't uncommon in horror, the trope of people stumbling upon a haunted house, haunted mansion, abandoned town, whatever, only to be tormented and haunted by the things in it is almost a backbone of the genre. But House never drops its humor or self-referential jokes until its very final act. Max's severed head makes a joke before it attacks, and even then only bites her on the butt. The skeleton that hangs out in the music room is almost always in frame throughout just to provide a fun kind of levity to the background. It even has a different reaction when the girls return to find Melody's hand playing the piano by itself. Even the final conflict where Kung Fu fights the painting and Professor and Fantasy sit floating on this pad knowing that they're about to die is interspersed with the arrival of the teacher to make you think that he'll finally be the hero that the movie has made him out to be. But he falters at the very first hurdle. And even the final chilling scene where Gorgeous meets her mother-in-law, the lady who made her and her friends come to this house in the first place. The mother moves in slow motion the entire time up until Gorgeous arrives. And when they're talking and Gorgeous delivers her final threatening line, the wind machine on the mom never once stops. It blows constantly the entire time, even occasionally blowing her own scarf into her face. I'm not going to harp on the backgrounds being painted or the green screening and all of that, because it was the 70s and Tron exists. But it definitely turns what might have been disturbing imagery at the time into an occasionally comedic scene, which I actually think adds to its charm in the modern day. I still love the movie House, even if I love it now for its absurd imagery and ridiculous visuals, instead of the potential horror film that I did when I was younger. Even my girlfriend liked it. She liked it because she found it very sweet and endearing, even throughout the whole horror part of the film. It isn't like movies today, where people are constantly bickering and fighting about how to survive or whether or not something is even happening. Throughout the movie, their friendship is what binds them and they rely on each other to get through it, even at the end. While it presumably kills her, Fantasy believes that Gorgeous is still her friend deep down inside and will help her. That's what makes this movie so great, even after 40 years, and why it deserves to be talked about now and for years to come. That's going to do it for me today, and hey, whether you like, comment, and subscribe or not, you're still a friend to me. Have a good night. We got